Good evening, Shabbos, everyone. This week's parsha is that of Kisisa. In Parsha's Kisisa, we have the incident of the golden calf. Hashem tells Moshe that Kla Yisrael was a party to this golden calf, and therefore they are subject to great criticism and consequences. Moshe Rabbeinu pours his heart out in sincere, earnest, soul-searching prayer. And Hashem accepts Moshe Rabbeinu's prayer, his advocacy on behalf of Klal Yisrael, as it says, Vayinochem Hashem al Hashem, he, he changed, so to say, his mind. Hashem changed the decision of the evil, the consequences that were to befall Klal Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu, he sees that this is a favorable moment, and then he engages Hashem and he asks that Hashem should consider the chain, the chain that Moshe has found in the eyes of Hashem. And please allow me that I should comprehend and know you, have a greater knowledge of you, Hashem, if indeed I have found favor in your eyes. Hashem agrees. And Hashem says, I will do this. And then Moshe continues and says, Harini noas kvodecha, please show me your glory. And to this Hashem agrees, and Hashem says, I will do so. I will show you my glory. I will have my, my divine presence pass before you, and you will sense and you will be exposed and realize and learn the 13 attributes. And these are the 13 attributes of mercy, which we use to this very day when we stand in prayer, especially on Yom Kippur, we invoke these 13 attributes of Hashem's mercy. And then Moshe Rabbeinu also says, Hashem, let there be a special, unique relationship with Klal Yisrael, and if we knew, we should be unique. And Hashem says this too. And Hashem says, I will do this all for you, Moshe Rabbeinu, because you have found chain in my eyes. And I will establish a covenant that I will never exchange <clears throat> and I will never reject Klal Yisrael. The question is, the Ramban uh, remarks, and others ask the question, and they say, before the sin of the golden calf, Klal Yisrael received the Ten Commandments. They were not privy to the 13 attributes of faith. They did not have this covenant that God would never exchange or substitute or reject us. So because we sinned with the golden calf and Hashem accepts Moshe's prayers, now after the sin, we're worthy of receiving not only the Ten Commandments that Moshe broke, God tells him, you make tablets and I will inscribe the Ten Commandments on them. Not only do we receive the Ten Commandments, but we also receive the knowledge that Hashem reveals to us of the 13 attributes and also this covenant that Hashem will never reject us. How does after the sin make us more worthy than prior to the sin? In addition, Rabbeinu Yeruchim Levovitz <clears throat> says that Moshe Rabbeinu's entire existence was to be an advocate for Klal Yisrael, to bring Klal Yisrael closer to Hashem. And everything he did, he did on behalf of Hashem. We never find Moshe Rabbeinu making personal requests. And yet over here, Moshe davens to Hashem and he says, Hashem, if I have found favor in your eyes, <clears throat> please let me let me know you. Let me have greater knowledge of your existence, of your essence. And Hashem, if I have indeed found favor in your eyes, show me your glory. It's like Moshe is making these requests for himself. This is totally out of character for Moshe Rabbeinu. <clears throat> but many Yeruchim explains that our sages tell us, the Mishalmi tells us, Bishuli <clears throat> Pesach Shomachad. Hashem says, open for me the width of a needle. The eftach lochah pischei shal ula. But I will open for you a portal as wide as a palace entrance. Now we think that this is just some beautiful, inspiring words. Make an effort, Hashem will help us. 
Ben Yerucham says it's more than that. It's just as there are laws of nature that Hashem created that there's gravity. You throw something up, it's going to fall down. <clears throat> you put we had, we, if we put our hands in fire, we're going to get burned. That's the nature of fire, it burns. Water is wet. There's another law of nature. That law of nature is if one makes a sincere, heartfelt effort, and even if all we can do is just open our hearts and souls the size of a needle, Hashem says it is a fact. It is a natural response that there will be an opportunity that opens for us like the width of a palace entrance. Maish Rabbeinu, <clears throat> when he was on Sinai, Hashem tells him that Klal Yisrael has gone astray and they gave their tacit approval. They did not respond in uproar against the multitude of Egyptians who joined them, who were the ones who were responsible for perpetrating the golden calf. Klai Yisrael, for the most part, was silent. And then Hashem says to Moshe, Now leave me be, and I will bring these consequences. And Moshe understand, what does it mean, leave me be? Hashem was telling Moshe that you have the ability to cancel this decree. And that ability is found within your heartfelt, sincere prayer emanating from your soul. And indeed, Moshe engaged in the prayer, invoking the merit of the patriarchs and being the proper worthy advocate for Klal Yisrael. <clears throat> but Moshe noticed that it said, Vayinochem Hashem, <clears throat> Hashem retracted hara, the evil consequences that he had spoken about in reference to Klal Yisrael. And Moshe said, the evil consequences have been canceled and negated, but Hashem's joyous love for Klal Yisrael, that has been tainted. That has not returned. And that disturbed Moshe. And Moshe saw that just being an advocate for Klal Yisrael was insufficient. So he changed his strategy. <clears throat> Moshe said, if prayer is so powerful, I utilize the prayer on behalf of Klal Yisrael. Now let me utilize prayer in a different way. Moshe said, Hashem, if I have found chain in your eyes, if I am worthy, then please I'm asking that I should be able to experience perceptions of your existence that heretofore were unknown to any human being. <clears throat> Rabbi Rucham says Moshe was endangering his life because those who seek knowledge which is beyond their ability can perish. But Moshe felt that it's his mission to do everything to enhance the bond of Klal Yisrael to Hashem and he was willing to endanger his existence. And he said, Hashem, if I indeed have found favor in your eyes, Allow me to have open these portals of your kindness and allow the knowledge of you to be transferred to me. And when Hashem said yes, then Moshe again said, if I have found favor in your eyes, show me your glory. Why was Moshe doing this? <clears throat> Not because Moshe was seeking it for himself, <clears throat> but rather Moshe knew if his prayers are accepted, then Hashem will open the gates and the flow of Hashem's love will now come forth as never before. Yes, it might be aimed towards Moshe, but Hashem's loving desire is now unto mankind is now going to be opened. And therefore Moshe then said, this incredible love that you are going to display to me, Hashem, let it be carried over unto all of Klal Yisrael. Let them indeed be able to be unique and have the special bond. Make me and your people distinct. From every people on the face of the earth. Hashem, if indeed you're opening the portal of your love, let it not be limited to me. Let it spill over and pour forth unto Klal Yisrael. 
And indeed, Hashem said, Moshe, this too I will do. <clears throat> and he taught Moshe the 13 attributes of mercy and engaged in the covenant that Hashem will never reject us. Never! Even if we fall to the depths of transgression as we did with the golden calf. How fortunate and blessed we are that we had Moshe Rabbeinu not only to represent us and to teach us, but to continuously teach us through the Torah that he delivered. And how fortunate we are that we indeed have the opportunity to return to Hashem despite our sins. The question was, how is it that we merited this after the sin? The answer is, before the sin, we were pristine. But after the sin, we were even greater. Why? For one who sins and recognizes the mistake and sincerely regrets, apologizes, and makes effort. And they feel in their heart and their soul that the distance that the sin has caused between them and Hashem is painful. Such a person is opening the portals of Hashem's great love. And that love has no boundaries. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish. Have a good Shabbos.